Convenience, pleasure, to save cost? As scared of traveling by water as you are? Think of the many reasons people sail across oceans like the Atlantic. You know how the quote goes though. The invention of the ship is the invention of the shipwreck. From the Costa Concordia to the tragic tale of the SS Quaran Madan, here are the 20 deadliest ship disasters ever. Number 20. Costa Concordia Ship Disaster in 2012 The crash of Costa Concordia had over 4,000 people on board feeling like characters in the movie Titanic, only that the wreck was not the fault of unexpected weather or ship malfunction, but of a series of human errors. The Concordia was supposed to take passengers on a seven-day Italian cruise from Civita Vecchia to Savona, but it had deviated from its planned path to sail closer to the island of Giglio, to a death end. The ship's captain had been performing a sail past Salute when he steered the ship too close to the island and hit a jagged reef. The impact damaged the ship, opening a 230-foot gash in the side of the cruise liner, allowing seawater to flood into the vessel. To worsen matters, the crew had dropped the anchor incorrectly, causing the ship to flop over even more dramatically. This totally avoidable accident took 32 lives, seriously injured many, and earned the captain a 16 years prison term. Why would he even sail a cruise ship that close to the shore? in the first place. Prosecutors said it was to impress a much younger Moldovian dancer with whom he was having an affair. He insisted it was just to salute other mariners and give the passengers a good view. We don't know about that, but we do know that the survivors may never want to get on a boat cruise again. Number 19. The SS Yurang Medan found adrift with its crew members dead in a supernatural way. The SS Yurang Medan is such a supposed ghost ship which, according to various sources, became a shipwreck in what is modern-day Indonesia, in the Straits of Malacca waters, after its entire crew had died under suspicious circumstances. The ship was found littered with corpses, including the carcass of a dog. Sprawled on their backs, their badly frightened faces upturned to the sun with mouths gaping open and eyes staring straight ahead. Think of a horrific caricature. No visible signs of injuries was observed on the deceased, and no survivors were located. Another version, though, had a survivor who told the story to a media person before he died. Anyways, just as the ship was to be prepared for a tow to a nearby port, a fire suddenly broke out in one of the cargo holds, forcing the boarding party to hastily evacuate the doomed vessel, which exploded before finally sinking. Some theories blame the tragedy on carbon monoxide poisoning. Some others say it must have been involved in smuggling chemical substances which could have reacted with the water entering the cargo hold to cause poisoning, and subsequently the explosion. We might just be getting ahead of ourselves because guess what? The mysterious SS Yurang Madan might be just another urban legend. Number 18. The Ghost Mary Celeste The Mary Celeste is yet another frightening ghost ship story. The ship had set off on what became a fateful voyage on November 7, 1872, with seven crewmen, the captain, his wife, and the couple's two-year-old daughter aboard. The 282-ton American merchant Brigantine had battled heavy weather for two weeks to reach the Azores, where the ship log's last entry was recorded at 5 a.m. on November 25th. Ten days later, it was spotted adrift by another brigantine, Di Gracia, who changed course to offer help. De Gracia found Mary Celeste with its only lifeboat missing, one of its two pumps disassembled and three and a half feet of water sloshing in the ship's bottom. There was no major damage to the vessel, and all of its crew members were missing. Below the decks, the ship's charts had been tossed about, and the crewmen's belongings were still in their quarters. The cargo of 1,701 barrels of industrial alcohol and their six-month supply of food and water was still intact. This seems to rule out pirate attack. So why then would Captain Benjamin Spooner Briggs order abandonment of a seaworthy ship in the open sea? We might never know because none of those 10 people who had been in board were ever seen or heard from again. Number 17. Carol A. Deering Perhaps the most intriguing mysteries are those that may never be solved. The Carol A. Deering set sail in August 1920 from Norfolk, Virginia, in tip-top shape, with an experienced captain, who fell ill a few days later and got replaced, and a crew of 10 men bound for Rio de Janeiro with a cargo of coal. The ship departed on August 22nd, successfully delivered its cargo on schedule, and set sail to return in December. On January 29th, 1921, a lightship keeper sighted the vessel bound for its home port. The Carol A. Deering had hailed the lightship and unidentified crewmen reported that the ship had lost its anchor, a situation they were unable to report it due to their radio being out. 
Later on, the lightship keeper, Captain Jacobson, would describe the crew of the Carol A. Deering as milling around suspiciously on the foredeck of the ship. This warranted the ship being spied, and when surfboats finally approached it on February 4th, the schooner was found aground and helpless in the rocks of Diamond Shoals. Its sails still set, lifeboats missing, and the entire crew vanished. Carol A. Deering had been abandoned and its crew had disappeared like ghosts, with personal belongings, key navigational equipment, some papers, and the ship's anchors missing. The FBI has not been able to uncover any traces of the ship's log or crew. May never. Number 16. RMS Titanic You probably saw this one coming. Well, who doesn't know about the British passenger liner that sank in the North Atlantic Ocean a century ago after striking an iceberg during her maiden voyage from Southampton, UK? At least from the 1990s tragic romance movie Titanic, Jack Dawson, and what was the girl's name again, remember? Anyways, the sinking of the actual RMS Titanic remains the most infamous and worst cruise ship disaster in history. At this time, it was the biggest and most celebrated passenger ship, and benefiting its first transatlantic crossing, it had many elites on board. The first class, the second, the third, the shipbuilder, everybody amounted about 2,240. When the Titanic set sail in April 1912, it was deemed practically unsinkable. Its fatal structural flaws, however, provided the irony. The accident occurred when the ship hit an iceberg while cruising at its maximum speed. Sensing no collision, the lookouts were relieved, oblivious that the iceberg had a jagged underwater spur which slashed a 300-foot gash in the hull below the ship's waterline. Soon enough, five compartments were already filling with seawater, and the bow of the doomed ship was alarmingly pitched downward, allowing seawater to pour from one bulkhead into the neighboring compartment Lifeboats were getting loaded and over 1,500 people losing their lives majorly due to hypothermia. How tragic. Number 15. RMS Lusitania The sinking of the RMS Lusitania was a major factor for US entering World War I. You definitely want to know about this one. RMS Lusitania, which at the time of its launch was the fastest, largest, and most luxurious ship in the world, had met its doom during a voyage from New York to Liverpool. when a German military submarine U-20 attacked it. A little backstory. This event is set during World War I, when due to a cascade of events Germany had declared the seas around the United Kingdom a war zone, and was intensifying submarine warfare in the Atlantic. Thus, when RMS Lusitania left New York for Britain on May 1, 1915, the German embassy in the US passed several newspaper advertisements to passengers of the danger of voyaging into the area in a British ship. Six days later, 11 miles off the southern coast of Ireland, inside the declared war zone, the ship was torpedoed by a German U-boat. The torpedo struck, an internal explosion resulted, and ship sank in 18 minutes, claiming the lives of 1,198 people. The tragic incidents turned public opinion against Germany, but in her defense, Germany had targeted the British ocean liner as a naval ship only because it was also carrying tons of ammunition for the British. As for the US, they did not forgive the great number of casualties that were American citizens. Number 14. RMS Empress of Ireland En route from Quebec to Liverpool, RMS Empress encountered a horrific maritime disaster that left it as the second worst cruise ship disaster. Out of 1,477 passengers on board, only 465 survived. 1,012 lives were lost in just 15 minutes the time it took for the ocean liner to sink into Canada's St. Lawrence River after being hit by a 6,000-ton Norwegian collider, the Storstead. If we're talking about the cruise ship disasters, only the Titanic beats this record. This has happened following a thick fog that engulfed the river. Armis Empress's lookouts had spotted the mast of the headlight of the Storstad, which had been carrying 10,000 tons of coal. The two ships continued to steam toward one another, but just few minutes later the fog became so thick that one ship couldn't make out the other. As you would expect, the two captains misunderstood each other's respective boats, positioning and direction leading to the fatal collision. The Storstad hit the Empress of Ireland broadside, tearing a 350 square foot hole in her hull. The impact allowing water to gush in, and the ship sank rapidly. Due to the listing of the vessel on her starboard side, just five of the 42 lifeboats could be launched into the water. Canada losing over a thousand people in that manner, at a time when she was only a growing nation, must have been such a national disaster. 
Number 13. MS Estonia MS Estonia was a cruise ferry with the capacity to accommodate 2,000 passengers and 460 cars. Its sinking was one of the worst maritime disasters of the 20th century, and the deadliest peacetime shipwreck to have occurred in European waters, with 852 lives lost. Harsh sea conditions wrecked the ship on September 1994 during its voyage from Tallinn, Estonia to Stockholm, Sweden. The gusts were in excess that night over the sea, the wind speed ranging from 35 miles per hour to 45 miles per hour. The first sign of trouble aboard the ship was when a metallic bang was heard, presumably caused by a heavy wave hitting the bow doors, but an inspection, however not thorough, was done and the ship showed no problems. It got really bad when the bad sea conditions finally forced the ship to list on the starboard side, making seawater gush in. The flooding prevented many people in the cabins from ascending to the boat deck. As the water flooded the vessel not just through the car deck, but also through windows and cabins, the windows had given way to the powerful waves such that the sea reached even the upper decks. Not many things are as distressing as a person observing their own death. Sadly, only 137 people lived to tell off the near-death experience. The 852 had no chance. Number 12. The Wahine Disaster With the sinking of the Lytelton Wellington Ferry Wahine, April 10, 1968 saw to the worst modern maritime disaster in New Zealand. You'd not expect that much casualties from a large modern vessel that had wrecked very close to a harbor, yet it happened. The passenger ferry, Wahine, being the largest ship of its kind in the world at that time, had set sail with 734 passengers and crew on board. Storm warnings had been issued, which was something regular with that route. However, events took a rather bizarre turn when just as Wahine reached the narrow funnel of the Wellington Harbor entrance, the wind speed suddenly shot up over 100 knots twice as much speed as when the captain decided it was the best the Wellington Harbor. The ship's radar system failed. A huge wave slammed into the ship, throwing many of those on board off their feet and putting the ship side onto the towering waves toward a notorious reef on the western side of the harbor entrance. A few misjudgments from the sailors and before you knew it, the ship had run aground on the reef and its engines stopped working. The violent turbulence was such that despite Wahing being close to shore, rescuers couldn't reach it from land. More so, one of the lifeboats got swamped shortly after leaving the sinking ship and tosses its occupants into the sea. Don't even imagine it. Number 11. SS Eastland The July 24, 1915 tragic tale of the SS Eastland is not the type of story you would readily believe. Because how does a ship capsize just right next to the dock? The liner was one of the five boats chartered to convey employers heading to an annual picnic from Chicago across Lake Michigan to Michigan City. Early that fateful morning, few minutes after passengers had began boarding the vessel, it started listing to the starboard side. Then later on to the port side, to even at the imbalance, the ship's crew let water into the ship's ballast tanks, which seemed to right things for a while. If only the passengers knew that the SS Eastland had a history of being unstable, or nearly capsizing on several previous occasions as it was not originally designed to carry up to 2,500 people, boarding continued and only ended when the ship reached its limit of 2,500 passengers. Then the fatal listing happened. Eastland started listing to the port side at least 25 degrees. Water was entering the ship, and as it moved away from the dock, the ship overturned, trapping hundreds of people underneath it and throwing some others off. Despite the rapid rescue response efforts, more than 844 lives were lost. People speculate that the capsizing was due to the flaws in Eastland's design and construction, inadequacy of its ballast tanks, and overloading. We don't know that. Number 10. SS Admiral Nakimov SS Admiral Nakimov was a cruise ship originally built with the name of Berlin III. It had been used by Germany, but was later given to the USSR's war reparations, so it was converted to a Soviet passenger ship. Having served the Soviet passenger lines for three decades, this huge, luxurious ship, already slated for retirement, had sunk when it got involved in an accident that occurred in the Semis Bay near the port of Novorossiysk en route to Sochi. The accident was due entirely to the negligence of two captains. The captain of the other ship, 
Peter Vasiv had failed to heed warning announced from SS Admiral Nakimov, while the captain of Admiral Nakimov was absent on the bridge at the time of the tragedy. Having gone for dinner, eventually the two ships collided, causing SS Admiral Nakimov to sink within a few minutes. The unsuspecting passengers, some of who were dancing, watched a movie but mostly sleeping due to the late time were completely caught off guard. In that frenzy, some of them began to jump into the cold sea to avoid getting trapped in that whirlpool. There was no time to launch the lifeboats. Rescue ships came right on time to save a greater number of the populace, but 423 people, mostly Ukrainians, out of the 1,234 people on board were already dead. Deaths caused by negligence are probably the hardest to forgive. Number 9. Alexander Suvorov In June 1983, Alexander Suvorov, a river cruise ship of the Valerian Kubuyashev class, ran into Doom's Way resulting in the death of over 100 Soviet citizens. It was cruising on the Volga Don Basin in Russia when it rammed into a railway bridge near the city of Ulyanovsk failing to pass through the second span of the bridge. Worse still, a freight train passing through the bridge got affected by the crash, causing some cars to derail and fall on the ship. Either the ship's command failed to negotiate the opening in the bridge or incorrectly gauged the level of the river, which is less than a mile wide at Ulyanovsk. That crash ripped away the upper deck of the Alexander Suvorov. Whatever the situation, authorities believed the captain could have prevented it, or at least provided clear orders for the passengers to evacuate. Just prior to the accident, an auction to be held at the cinema hall was announced, leading the passengers to the upper deck of the ship. The accident became the worst known inland waterway disaster in the Soviet Union since the World War II. 176 people out of the 415 people on board to their deaths. However, the ship itself was restored after the accident and now currently sails another route. Number 8. Morrow Castle Disaster Each shipwreck comes with a story behind, some due to avoidable circumstances, others due to unforeseen changes in events. In this list, the Morrow Castle has a particular story. To start with, the Morrow Castle was a luxury cruise ship from the 1930s that made runs between New York City and Havana, Cuba, and was popular with tourists both young and old. As it would usually, the cruise ship set on its way to Havana, Cuba. But that day in September 1934, it wouldn't return in one piece. The cruise ship was on its return voyage to New York City from Havana when a fire emanated from the cruise ship's library and engulfed the entire ship on the coast of the New Jersey shore. The fire had escalated quickly due to bad weather. Inadequate crew in the ship's design, which incorporated easily flammable interior materials. This disaster resulted in the loss of more than 137 people out of the 558 passengers and 240 crew on board. Just 12 lifeboats could be launched out of the many lifeboats capable of rescuing 408 people. The devastating fire aboard the Morrow Castle made a sentence to the marine travel world. Its wreck accelerated the improvement of shipboard fire safety and directly brought fire retardant materials, automatic fire doors, and shipwide fire alarms into use. Since Morrow Castle, Greater attention is being placed on fire drills and lifeboat procedures. Number 7. SS Andrea Doria The SS Andrea Doria was a flagship Italian line popular for its luxuries, which included three outdoor swimming pools and numerous works of art, as well as notable safety features such as 11 watertight compartments as well as radar, which was a new invention at that time. Its wreck is considered the world's first major radar-assisted collision at sea, as the cause of the accident is assumed to be from the misreading of the radar. The disaster took place in July 1956 near the coast of Nantucket, Massachusetts, while the ship cruising towards New York City rammed into another ship. Both ships had detected the other one with its radar and made adjustments in an effort to widen the passing distance. However, each misjudged the other's actual course leading to the eventual fatal collision. A thick fog which caused poor visibility for both captains contributed greatly to this. The eastbound Swedish passenger liner Stockholm stuck Andrea Doria just aft and below the starboard bridge, fatally damaging the later. Within minutes of the collision, Andrea Doria began to list starboard, rendering lifeboats on the port side inaccessible. This resulted in the death of 52 people, while 1,660 people were rescued by ships. The Swedish liner, on the other hand, remained shipworthy, suffering only damage to its bow. Number 6. MV Wilhelm Gustloff A long-ago night, Wilhelm Gustloff, which used to be a hospital ship, 
was pulling a different duty in the Baltic Sea. It was part of the Operation Hannibal, the evacuation of German military personnel and civilian refugees from the ports of East Prussia, now cut off from Germany by the advance of Soviet armies deep into the province of East Prussia. Soviet submarine S-13 in the Baltic Sea had sunk the ship on January 30, 1945, by sending four torpedoes its way. It is difficult to accurately provide a number of casualties, and is not clear how many people were on board. Even as Wilhelm Gustloff was departing the harbor, it was still picking up more human cargo making the ship, built to carry a few thousand people, to bulge with some 7,000 to 10,000 people. Three of the torpedoes hit home, striking Wilhelm Gustloff on the bow and turning the jam-packed ship to a horror scene. About 9,400 people lost their lives. Charges that Marinesco had committed war crimes by sinking Wilhelm Gustloff had arisen a number of times, but they were not sustained as Marinesco insists he did not know was a refugee ship, saying that the presence on board of some 1,000 naval personnel made the ship a legitimate target. Whatever the case be, some histories ought not to be repeated ever again. Number 5. MV Dona Paz can you imagine a maritime disaster worse than the sinking of the Titanic? Talk about the MV Doña Paz. The Philippines registered passenger ferry had sank after colliding with an oil tanker, MT Vector, on December 20, 1987. Upon collision, Vector's cargo had ignited and caused a fire on the ship that spread onto the Doña Paz, and subsequently even the sea around the ship were fire. But for sheer carelessness, the collision could have been avoided. Traveling from Leyte Island to the Philippine capital of Manila, MV Doña Paz had been seriously overcrowded, with at least 2,000 passengers not listed on the manifest. It is claimed that the ship did not even have a radio and that the life jackets were locked away. So when the ship was set ablaze, passengers and crewmen alike started running around in panic. The survivors were left with no other option than to jump off the ship and swim among charred bodies in flaming waters around the ship. Just five days before Christmas, the oil tanker, which sank too, however, takes the greatest part of the blame as it was found to be unseaworthy and operating without a license, a lookout, or a qualified master. That extreme sport resulted in an estimated death toll of 4,386 people and only 24 survivors, making the events of MV Doña Paz the deadliest peacetime maritime disaster in history. Number 4. The SS Kianga Shipwreck SS Kianga is easily China's worst maritime disaster. It also made the mark for the world's worst maritime disaster unrelated to military action at the time. Well, that four decades before the horrifying MV Doña Paz struck humanity. The Kianga had a displacement of 2,100 tons and was packed with refugees from the Chinese Civil War. However, on December 4, 1948, the passenger steamship blew up in the mouth of the Wangpu River, 80 kilometers north of Shanghai. The suspected cause of the explosion was the ship hitting a mine left behind by the Imperial Japanese Navy during World War II, destroying her stern. It took some hours before rescuers became aware of the ship's catastrophe. The exact death toll is unknown, as it is difficult to accurately estimate how many passengers were on board. Kianga's official capacity was 1,186, but 2,150 passengers were listed on the manifest. Then, add the many stowaways that it was almost certainly carrying. Anyways, it was estimated that between 2,750 and 3,920 perished, over twice as many as when the SS Titanic went down. Number 3. Yangtze River Cruise Ship Yangtze River cruises are popular with people holidaying in China. However, on Monday, June 1, 2015, one of the ships, named Dongfeng Jing in Chinese, capsized in the Yangtze River. The 76-meter-long, 2,200-ton ship was carrying 405 passengers, mostly elderly tourists but also one three-year-old, as well as five travel agency employees and 46 crew members. The cruise was embarking on a voyage of at least 1,500 kilometers, from the eastern city of Nanjing to Chongqing in the southwest when it meets its ruin. The Dongfeng Jing was hit at night by a sudden squall during the journey. Strong winds accompanying the downpour thus overturned the vessel. The vessel had flopped as soon as the impact met it, taking just a minute or so. At least five people dead and nearly 450 people missing. Some of the survivors encouraged the authority to sanction the captain and his crewmen who they accused of an inadequate response to the dangerous turn of events, including a failure to send a distress signal. Search teams found the partially submerged ship about 12 hours after it went down, with anxious friends and family hoping for any news of their loved ones. When people go for cruises on the sea, they go for a nice treat. Nothing ever prepares them for tragedies like this. Number 2. MV Lajula 
People pull risky stunts and get away with it all the time, but what happens on the days when Luck decides to take a nap? Within that little time, a lot of things could go wrong, like the MV Lajula getting capsized in 5 minutes. On September 26, 2002, the Jula, a Seglanese ferry, set out through the Gambia River toward northern Senegal. The ship was reportedly overcrowded, with the Jula far exceeding its maximum capacity of 550 passengers. The exact number of all passengers remains unknown, but there are 1,034 travelers travelers with tickets, and over 700 people not on the passenger list, which was a very common occurrence on the ferry. However, that fateful day, the ship had sailed into a storm off the coast of Gambia. As a result of the rough seas and wind, the ferry capsized, throwing passengers and cargo into the sea within five minutes. Many of the ship's passengers died during or immediately following the capsizing. A large number probably survived, only to drown while awaiting rescue. When the ship finally sank, it also took with it the few people that couldn't get off. In the end, 1,863 people were killed and only 64 passengers survived. Number 1. MSC Diamond A sunken cruise ship has rested deep underwater on a steep slope of the Santorini caldera for more than 13 years. I'm talking about the MSC Diamond, a ship that had run aground off the Greek island of Santorini on April 5, 2007. As the ship ran aground on the well-marked volcanic reef east of Neokomeni, it began taking on water and listed up to 12 degrees to starboard. 1,195 passengers and about 400 crew members were evacuated to safety before the ship was towed off the rocks and allowed to sink in the remnants of the ancient volcano. Two passengers, a French father and daughter, were lost. Two others have been listed as missing. The sunk ship has become a regular feature in the island as the Greek government has failed to remove its wreck, irrespective of complaints from the locals. The locals worry about the looming environmental destruction stemming from the ship's fully loaded fuel tanks. Hopefully something is done soon enough to save the paradise of many people's dreams, Santorini. Did this episode have you reconsidering that boat trip? I bet. Or maybe it made you recall a similar horrifying sea incident. Tell us about it. Also check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now. See you next time.